Hello friends and welcome. My name is Nancy. You might know me as Naturalist Nancy. I'm here um, working at a beautiful painting that we're going to be doing today on wildflowers. And oh, this is such a gorgeous day out today. And uh, spring is such a beautiful time to see some of our amazing wildflowers. I have this little fan of different wildflowers that may um, be around in Michigan right now. I know for sure I was out walking the trails the other day and I saw some uh, bloodroot, one of my favorites. And um, I also have seen the uh, trillium coming up and trillium are so much fun too. Be looking for those as we're going. Today what we're going to be doing though is we're going to be doing a beautiful oil pastel painting actually mixed with regular pastels and we'll talk about that in a little bit of some marsh marigolds. They're called marsh marigolds because they like a swampy area. I took a photo of one. This was taken right here on the trails and um, I blew it up because I wanted to fill the space. Um, marsh marigolds are gorgeous, bright yellow, they have long stems, their leaves are very beautiful and fan-like, and they have five petals, and it's really interesting because some of them are just coming up and open, and so that's a nice composition there. We're going to be doing a pastel painting, an oil pastel painting, but I wanted to give you an idea of what you're going to need um, to do one, if you want to follow along with me, or if you want to... Um, you know, watch the video and then gather your supplies later. First of all, they do sell expensive pastel painting uh, paper. And all pastel paper is, is that it's a heavy sketch paper. It has a tooth to it. Um, but you know what? You can use watercolor paper. It's less expensive. And uh, you can get them at craft stores for a more inexpensive. But you can get a whole tablet. It's really inexpensive. But you need to have a paper that has a tooth to it. Um, a tooth is that texture to a paper, and that's going to hold the chalk, it's going to hold the oil pastel on, because what we're doing actually is not a drawing, but a painting um, using a drawing technique. Now, you know what? Listen to this. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this. Can you hear that? That's the tooth of a fine piece of sandpaper. And you know what? Sometimes you can even use uh, fine sandpaper in place of watercolor paper or expensive um, pastel paper. So that's kind of fun too. Um, here's an example, and no two paintings are alike, of what we're going to be doing today. There's going to be an undercoating or what we call an underpainting of deep colors because when you're using oil pastels or pastel chalks, um, you want to always go dark to light. So I'll be showing you that technique. And do you see how it looks painterly? It doesn't look like the photograph. Anybody can go ahead and take a photo, but a painter or an artist, it's their impression of the flower. And when I looked at these um, outside, these marsh marigolds, oh, I was just so aware of their bright, beauty of their bright beauty and bright colors so i interpreted that so here's what we're going to be using um, now some of you may have i hope you all have a pencil around the house that's something we're going to need you may have some colored chalks now colored chalks are not pastels but if you get um, a good brand i know crayola makes a good brand the the chalks are going to be round you see how they're round they, they flow in my finger very easily these are brightly colored, and I know a lot of kids are working with um, chalks. They'll do those chalk paintings outside on their sidewalks. But what you really want are the bright, bright colors. And you can get little inexpensive boxes of those. So if you have some of those around the house, you could use those today. Um, <clears throat> this is another item that you could find at a craft store, and it's just a little set. Mine, as you can see, is not complete because I've used some of them up. But... These are oil pastels and they're really inexpensive. This whole box was like $1.49, somewhere around that price. And um, oil pastels are like a uh, colored pastel, but it has an oil to it. And look at, look at how easily that rubs off. It's a pure pigment. Pigment is the coloration. Now here is my set. I have a lot of different types of pastels. These are not the colored chalk. These are actual pastels. So pastels means 
that this one, see how it's kind of squarish? It's pure pigment. It's got a lot of color. Look at that. I just rubbed my hands on that. Now, I don't mind getting dirty when I work. It's just kind of being an artist. But some people uh, like to wear gloves. And if you have, want to protect your hands, you can wear gloves. Other people put like a hand lotion on their hands first. Um, but what you want to do when you're done working is really thoroughly wash your hands because if you're using pastels, that's pure pigment. Okay, so it's pretty big stuff. So I'm going to move that over. Something else. Oh, here's my own little private set of oil pastels. I keep them in this cute little container so I can take it outside when I'm working outside. I have a board here and I have a piece of my uh, watercolor paper here. And notice how I put long strips here and here of masking tape and it didn't really have to be centered but what it did have to do is really hold it in place because when we're going to be painting today with our oil pastels and our chalk we're going to be using like my dad used to say a lot of elbow grease we're going to really be pushing hard because we're going to build up the painting so are we ready to get started let's do that um, i always have a reference here sometimes i even have an actual um you know, collection of flowers. But since these are wildflowers, I like to take photos of them. I really don't want to disturb them growing out in the wild. So I'll just put this here nearby so I can look at the composition. I'll put that right in front of me. We're going to start by using a pencil here. And um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to mark out where I want my flowers. And remember, I am looking at a photo, but I'm also... Um, I'm also just kind of interpreting that or thinking about how do I want my picture to look. So I'm going to make a little circle here, kind of like an ovoid shape, an ovoid shape here. This is where the blossoms of the marsh marigolds will be. And here's one here. Then I have one here. Notice I'm not even going into any detail. I'm just plotting out a space where I know I want my flowers to be. Now let me count them. One, two, three, four, and five. And that's really interesting because when you're doing a composition, odd numbers are always more interesting than even numbers. And see how I kind of group these together and kind of set those two apart? That's another little trick for composition. And then I notice that I have some little buds here. So I'm just going to, you know, just kind of put little buds here and there. Okay, now I know that that's where I want my um, flowers to be. Oh, I forgot to mention something that's important when you're working flat, is underneath here I have a board. And that's helpful for me because every once in a while I want to tip it to look at it this way, and then I'll set it back down. And it's nice to just tip it. And sometimes when I work, I'll actually work with it tilted. That helps me to get a good um, perspective on that. So what I'm gonna do here first now is I'm going to put what we call the underpainting. I'm going to be using my oil pastels and I'm going to go for like a deep blue. Uh, let's see, my deepest of all green. Oh, there's a nice deep green and even a brown. Now, uh, oil pastels and regular pastels are really good at blending with each other. And, you know, we think about three colors together. It's called the power of three. And what I'm going to do is called an underpainting. Don't be concerned about this. This is setting what they call the tone of the painting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, where I don't have the circles, I'm just going to press quite hard with my uh, oil pastel. And notice that I'm going in a certain direction. Okay, that's up to you, but when I work with oil pastels, I like the idea of movement in my underpainting. It kind of makes my painting look alive. So see how I'm going around my spaces, just like that, with the blue. Okay. They have a directional, these are called directional strokes. And now I'm going to go with my green, and I'm just going to kind of blend in where the white of the paper is showing. And oh, by the way, you don't have to use white paper. Um, like if I was using that sandpaper, that's kind of like a light brown color. You can also use uh, tinted pastel papers. They sell tinted pastel paint, 
paper so you can uh, decide on that so see how I'm kind of blending this and I'm pressing hard I'm still trying to keep that uh, diagonal stroke as I go so there we go I'm doing this under painting and this is like I said this is going to be a really deep value um, it's going to replicate the ground uh, underneath the uh, flowers. Now I come with the brown, and again I'm pressing hard. Now look at what happened here. As it mixed with those colors, it made a real interesting uh, green, and that's what you really want to have happen. You want to have different shades of colors coming together. Um, it almost looks like a camouflage when I add that brown to it and some of those colors, you know, that dark kind of camouflage green and that blue gives it a good shadow. Okay, so once I've filled that in, now at this point you're probably thinking, well, that doesn't look like much of anything, but don't worry. Have faith in your painting. Uh, it all takes steps to get to where you want to be. Okay, now, um, I know that I want my corners to be darker, so I'm going to go back with the, the, the blue, and I'm going to kind of deepen those corner edges. And the reason I do this, it just gives the painting some uh, dimension. And I'm going to go back with the green, and see how I'm just layering that? Oh my goodness, so much fun. So much fun and messy. That's one of the reasons why I like to have a drawing board because um, it does kind of uh, make my drawing area not so messy. My hands will be messy enough. Okay, now I'm going to use my fingers and remember how I said that um, you're going to get messy if you use this. If you don't like to do this, you can also use... Um, like a little uh, tissue of some sort. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab something over here real quick. It's a little tissue. Let's see what I do with that. I'm just going to rub that in a little bit, kind of blend that in. Okay. What we're doing here is we're uh, building up the painting a little bit. Okay, now once I have this coating of oil pastels, I'm going to go now with my um, pastels. And pastels, like I said, are pure pigments. So here's this. Now for the pastels, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in an opposite direction. I think I'm going to go vertically with this. And then that chalk, I'm sorry, those pastels, that pure pigment, is going to go where the white wasn't. See, and I'm just adding some vibrant background to that. Going with that. And then around here like this. And I'm going to set that aside. I like a board too because I can set my colors out of what I've used. And then here's come one that is a little lighter pastel. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to now begin, I'm using circular motions, and I'm going to kind of suggest my leaves. And, you know, marsh marigolds are so beautiful. They have this beautiful, broad leaf. So I'm just going to suggest the leaves that are going to be around there. When you're using pastels like this, you do need to be a little patient because it's a matter of building up your painting. So now I know that I have some leaves around there. I'm kind of suggesting where that is. Oh, and something I don't know if you've noticed as I'm working, I am not drawing really any outlines. You know, when you think about drawing, you know, there's a lot of line work. I'm just going right with filling in uh, the area. So there I've suggested where those leaves are going to be with this color, and then I think I'm going to add some other uh, color greens on top of that. And see how I'm now, I'm pressing down hard. Notice that I'm holding my board with my thumb. I mean, it's a lot of pressure. It's fun to do, and because you have that oil base, 
your, uh, they kind of slide, so you kind of have to hold on to your painting. See how I'm building that up as I go. So you can kind of see the leaves taking space and it's taking shape. And the nice thing about this is that if there's an area that you don't like, like you're thinking, oh, why did I put that color there? I really didn't want that color. I would really rather have it be a little deeper and darker there. You know what? It's so cool because with pastels, you can just go right over the area again with the color that you wanted. Now, do you see how it's starting to shape up? It looks very painterly. So let's take a rest on that for a minute and let's think about our flower spaces. Now, when I look at my Marsh Marigolds, they, again, I'm thinking three values. I'm thinking that there's going to be a light value and there's going to be a darker value that I can mix. And I'm even going to uh, put white in here at some point, so I'll keep that aside. And there might be a very light, a lighter value here. But I'm going to start the painting with my oil paints. My oil pastels, I should say. So here's a yellow. Right, see how it's kind of mixed into the green a little bit. And I've got some of that orangey color. And then this is a deeper yellow. Oh, I like that. So remember, we always go dark uh, to light. So I think what I'm going to do with this is use my darkest, deepest, kind of like, it's almost like an orange yellow. And I'm just going to start in the center there. Oh, this is fun. Oil pastels. When I was a little girl, I used to like to play with my mom's makeup. And she used to get real mad at me if I'd get into her lipstick. But then when I got oil pastels, I was like, well, I don't need any lipstick. This is so much more fun because um, there's a lot of different colors. Now see what I did here? I put the darkest color here, and it almost feels like lipstick, in the center. Oops, I'm going to maybe dot a little here and here. I can't forget my little buds over here. And then I'm going to take that um, more medium, and I'm going to reach out for that. Now here's where I get a little scientific. Um, Marshmallow Golds can be identified by their bright yellow color, but they also have five petals. So now I'm just going to suggest five petals. So I've got one, two, three, four, five. Here's another one. And it's okay if it's kind of mixing with the green. It's a painting. And see, we're just kind of suggesting that. We're going to build that up a little later. We're just kind of suggesting. And what I'm doing with those petals now, because they're very ovoid shape so I'm just making little ovoids around that center deeper color two three four and five how fun is that look at it starting to pop out and that's one thing you'll notice about the marsh marigolds are so bright you know another name for them is a cowslip because where they uh, live is marshy and mucky and, um, you know, when the early uh, settlers would come here, uh, you know, they would be bringing their cows out to pasture or whatever. And sometimes they would get into the muck and they'd slip. And you could tell. And so they would say, oh, yeah, well, those are the cow slip flowers. But I love Marsh Marigolds. I love that name better. Okay, see how it's kind of building up here again a little bit? Now, what we're going to do is make the background a little more obvious. We're going to take a uh, deep brown and we're going to build up the leaves by what we call the negative space behind it. So here's what I'm going to do. Because they grow in that real marshy area, I'm going to kind of show that marshy area by that deep brown. Do you see that underneath the leaves? Don't worry about the long stems. We'll get to those later. But I'm just going to kind of suggest that there is some kind of muckiness underneath those leaves. And then what this also does is it kind of, I'm kind of suggesting the shape of the leaves. Can you see the shape of the leaves starting to come out again now? As I'm, this is called negative buildup. I'm using the negative space to kind of show the leaf. Oh, there's a leaf right there. It just popped out. See, I'm just kind of suggesting that. Now notice I'm not drawing a line because this is a painting. And so I'm just kind of adding that color. 
kind of going to draw the line there. Okay, I think I'm going to do something with this area here. I'm going to take my color off. I'm going to make this area a little bit bigger. And I might put some new, fresh kind of very light green. You know, the when, as leaves develop, they're a lighter color. And then they get darker as they mature. So I'm just going to add some light color leaves right there. I'm going to kind of blend it right in with those. Okay, it's getting to there. It's starting to. Now, if you're somebody that's very protective of your materials and you, oh, I just have to leave the paper on my crayons. I just can't you know, destroy those crayons. You know what? Maybe this isn't the thing for you because you're going to be pressing so hard on some of your oil pastels and um, you're going to maybe break them. And even the uh, chalks might break. You're really going to get into that a little bit. Okay, so don't worry about that. Gotta. That's what they're meant to be. Their art materials are meant to be used. Ooh, I'm loving the look of that. Now, thank you. Now what I'm gonna do is I am going to take my uh, pastels. Notice how I kept my oil pastels on one side and my lighter um, pastels over here, my, my regular pastels over here. And they'll help me, you know, as I'm working. Now I'm going to take this, it's kind of like a medium green, it's a pastel, it doesn't have the oil in it, and I'm just going to now, uh, did you hear that? I'm just going to kind of draw some uh, detail to the leaves, kind of around here, I'm just going to push that in there, oh there we go, there it is, now I can see some lines. And this is one of the reasons why you need really tough paper because you can't just, you know, use regular copy paper with it, that would rip. You need really tough paper. Now see what I'm doing there. When you look at a leaf, a leaf has a stem and then it has leaf veins. And that's what I'm trying to um, illustrate here. Just I go from where the leaf is growing at the center and then out. And I use that sharp movement. Oh, you can see that it's starting to develop. Here's another, here's some of those veins of the leaf coming out and around. And this is when sometimes I just stop and I just look. I really am worried about this space here. I don't really care for this space. I think I might um, add another uh, flower there since it's kind of uh, white there. And this is, you're the artist, so you can kind of, Decide what you want to go there. I'm gonna just gonna make one that's kind of developing right here in the center. And I'm gonna build that up with some green because it's kind of below the other ones. There we go. Now that's making me feel good. See how you can do that? You can look and change what you're working on. Now I'm feeling much better about that. Well, you know what? You can stop at any point at this point. Um, sometimes people like it to just be like this. It looks really artistic and it called, it's called impressionistic or expressionistic where there's a lot of movement. Or you can continue to work on it. Adding those details. I'm going to take a really dark oil pastel and I might say, hmm, I really want to be able to see those individual um, petals. So I'm going to suggest there's one there, there's another one there, there's one, two, three, there's four. And then you could just kind of suggest those as you go. Maybe there's a real dark area you want to add some more detail to. You can also add highlights. Oh, and you know what I noticed about my primroses, I'm sorry, not my primroses, my marsh marigolds, was that they had on the inside, let me see if I can find it. Oh, look at this nice orange. They had a real deep center of yellow. It's where the stamen and the pistils are coming from. So I'm just going to suggest that there. And then look at, I've got my white 
this is one of the last things you want to do. Remember, you're always going from dark to light. So you're going to add some highlights. Add some um, places of real light, light yellow. And I'm taking my oil pastel. Remember, these aren't chalks. These are oil pastels. You can do this whole thing with chalks. Um, and the same rule applies, that it's light to dark. Okay, I like it. Now, as a last thing that you're doing, and I'll just move my things aside, this is optional. You can leave it like this. Uh, you can take your finger, if you want to, and smudge and smudge and smudge. Remember, look at, look at my fingers. You can smudge that up and blend that in so you don't see any of those uh, white little windows of paper showing through. Or you know what? And this is optional. There's um, a substance that's called lamp oil. Um, maybe kerosene is another name. And I have a little in this container. Um, I, I like scented lamp oil because it makes it smell good. And because there's oil here, this is optional. I have a nice flat one inch brush and look what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to take the oil and it helps blend that. See, look at that. It's melting, kind of melting away the oil, a little bit of the oil pastels and it's turning the oil actually into like a paint. Now, if you are a young person trying this at home, please don't just grab any kind of lamp oil. Uh, get your parents' approval for that. Um, and make sure, like I do here, that it's a covered area. But see what I'm doing now? That lamp oil is kind of helping me kind of blend it. Because maybe you don't like all those strokes. Maybe you want it to kind of look more like a painting. But see, I'm just kind of suggesting it here and there. I'm not doing it to all the whole thing, just a little bit. And then if I see some windows here. Okay, I'm going to put my top on my oil. That's really important. I don't want that spilling around. And let me just move this for a moment and I'll hold that up for you. And see, here's one painting of the Marsh Marigolds. And look at how different it is for this one. It depends on how you want to, how much time I worked a long, longer on this, developing this but this is more impressionistic. It's fun to go out, explore nature if you can. Um, get out, it's a beautiful day today. See some of the flowers that are around you. Also, stay tuned for some of the videos that we're putting together. I know that we have one coming up about uh, wildflowers, especially. Um, and I hope you enjoyed this and uh, have a wonderful day. Thank you.